Uh, and we've seen you know, uh, student teams come from here and, and then great companies. Uh, and uh, I think that, that's really what we want to try to encourage. It's like, like if we want kind of future where you fast forward to, if you're so excited about the future that you want to sort of fast forward into the future and see, what, see what's happening, that's the kind of future that we want. systems while Ali runs the mechanical side. Um, we're a team of, uh, right now, we're about 20, 25, but we're a total team at San Jose State of 45. Uh, incorporating all facets of engineering, business, entrepreneurship, and uh, graphic design and design alone. So. so, can you tell me the story of this year's So, this is the first year we are actually designing a pod and in the competition. Uh, last year we made it to uh, the final round of the design phase, uh, but we didn't, couldn't quite make it through because of the uh, difference in resources. We weren't able to do the right simulations because we couldn't necessarily get access to those tools. Uh, now, we have, uh, we're sharing a warehouse with a lot of the other projects at uh, uh, San Jose State. And what we have is a fully designed pod. Uh, we have a full levitation system. We have, uh, we designed a scissor mechanism for it. We're fully competing in the levitation competition for the 2018 SpaceX Hyperloop pod jump. How many students are working? So, um, we have around 40 to 45 students that are all on the team. Uh, fortunately, we were only able to take about 20 down, so. What do they do? Is it just engineering students? Actually, we have, we have students from all different categories. Uh, chemical, electrical, mechanical, um, and then we have, we have business, entrepreneurship, marketing. Uh, there was a few outreach um, and uh, public events. And uh, the, we, we've been able to incorporate every major we can find at San Jose State uh, in some fashion or another, including uh, graphic design. We had a lot of people come in and help design the pod and design the special the specifications and the t-shirts as well, which we're a really big fan of. So, why did you come to SpaceX? How and why? Okay, so uh, why is because we think this is an incredible opportunity to showcase this technology. Uh, Hyperloop itself is on the cutting edge of transportation, and to be able to have a hand in developing that is a once in a lifetime opportunity for any engineer or any person in general. Uh, and well, even though we weren't able to make it uh, to the full competition, uh, the fact that we were able to build and test our new technology, our new levitation systems, uh, has has been uh, treated in its own way. Um, but as far as uh, what we're doing here, the, uh, the levitation competition is a sub-competition from the race. Uh, the race, there are 17 teams and four are chosen to run. Uh, but with levitation, it was a new uh, area or ex of expertise for SpaceX to showcase something that could be scalable or more scalable than uh, a low-profile system that they build for speed. With speed, you end up wanting to make it lighter, more powerful, uh, you cut up a lot of the faculties that uh, would normally allow you for uh, putting a passenger on there. Uh, but with the levitation engines, we can actually carry a passenger. We can carry a lot more, just depending on the size of the array, the conductive plate, and uh, the amount of power you'd like to put into the system. So we figured that there's a little bit more opportunity for scalability. Uh, that seems to be most of what we want to cover. So can you explain what we're Yeah. Um, so this, given this is our, one of our first iterations of this competition, building a pod, uh, we lacked a lot of the experiences that came with specialty machining. Uh, if a part broke down, uh, we had to fix it immediately and do the best we could with milling and tools. And unfortunately, a lot of the parts that broke down were closer to this the uh, competition. Uh, we were actually here at SpaceX when a lot of our systems began to break. Um, the uh, and I, I say that mildly because the we always had spare parts. We had a BMS uh, three by order three BMS that came with our custom battery set. And uh, then we designed our own circuit off of that. We said, okay, backup to backup to backup, just in case. And three of our BMSs ended up going down, and we ended up designing our own circuit in an, an adapted circuit to monitor all the cells individually, which came out working flawlessly, which was uh, more than we could have ever asked for, especially designing a BMS and the complex, all the complex circuits that go into that. Um, so that was another challenge. Another one is that the uh, 
uh, the propulsion system. It has a, uh, a small uh, valve that opens and closes and helps actuate the system mechanism. It's rated for 300 psi, uh, but it is not necessarily the most structurally sound on impact. And so at, at one point, the uh, system had fallen and the pneumatic system swung and snapped itself. And so we, we worked and we then machined it together and we got everything working and running. But at that point, it's, it becomes a little bit harder to tell SpaceX, this is, this is what we have, these are the solutions we came to it, these are the problems you brought up, here's how we solved them, and here's the time we have left for the competition. So it became a matter of time after that, right? Sponsorship is absolutely vital. It is germane to a project of this size. And if we were to ever move forward, sponsorship is how we do it. We are a state school. Uh, and that that doesn't mean that we're you know we're out of the count. It means that uh, in order for us to reach out and get funding, it becomes an effort on our own. And uh, the school is able to sponsor us as much as possible, and they, they have done leaps and bounds. They are our main sponsor, and they're the reason we're at this competition alone. Uh, but getting sponsors and reaching out to them and ensuring that, oh, this is what they can find, how, how can we benefit from each other's correspondence? That is, that is a learning, uh, that is learning curve in itself. Uh, but with a lot of the teams like Delft, uh, they are sponsored by DHL and Holland, uh, an entire national government. So up against the state school, it becomes a little bit uh, tough. But we we're working to uh, to reach out to more like a sponsor from SolidWorks and Sierra Circuits, one of our main sponsors for our circuit boards. Well done, guys. Um, and uh, Arcspex, the ones who were able to help us design those hover engines. We ended up reaching out to local shops, and uh, like Arcspex is in Los Gatos, it's just down the road. And we were able to help them and work with them to develop their own technology, and then say, hey, do you mind if we use it? We, put, we had to put in the effort, and help, we actually helped them move. We brought a team to help them move facilities so we can kind of pay up our debts. Um, but it has been a learning experience, and we've been able to establish some incredible contacts. Uh, and we, any sponsors that we can branch off from that, um, any, a lot of this you see is uh, a bit random. The uh, tacos o primo, right? The uh, we have Espinosa Farms. The Aeroshell itself is entirely sponsored. Uh, we thought we weren't going to have an Aeroshell run at all. Um, and then one of our uh, engineers had to go home to Salinas, and uh, and in his area of town there were farmers looking to sponsor uh, these kind of projects and so we actually reached out to agricultural businesses as well. So it was a matter, a matter of not only hitting the target markets but hitting every market. Uh, and that it's it's an, a mass learning curve for students like us. Um, we don't necessarily have the expertise to reach out to uh, companies but Sierra Circuits you guys reached out to us which is a phenomenal opportunity as well. Uh, and you have been in the competition before so it was good having a sponsor that knew exactly what they were going into, uh, which is important for us as well. Um, it helps us keep the team going. It helps us move from iteration to iteration, make sure that these engineers get the most and uh, most opportunity they can and the most exposure they can. And it really pushes us to move forward and maintain this progress with San Jose State and keeps it going. The more sponsors we have, the more likely this pro program is to survive. So. Can you talk about what you're going to do today, like at the event, like um, have you met the other teams? Yeah, actually, we've, um, uh, everyone, it's an open source competition, right? So, as much as I would like to patent my levitation technology and the, or the, or the quad levitation technology, um, the, given that it's open source, it's all SpaceX. So, that is a double-edged sword. One, getting private, uh, uh, private technology or um, IP is incredibly difficult and there are a lot of hoops to jump through. Uh, however, because it's open source, everyone is so much more willing to share their technology and share what they're willing to learn and share what they, the experience that they had. And, uh, don't, don't order the air tank. That's, that's, we had that same problem back. Uh, make sure you use those, the, uh, the, not brass tubing, but steel tubing. See what you, see what you can do with that, but don't, don't do it under hydraulics. Make sure that it's, uh, it doesn't oxidize, right? So it's, it's a matter of everyone building off of each other. So we're kind of standing on the shoulders of giants. Which is, it's, it's an incredible experience to have that kind of unification in a competition alone. Do well, you guys have the goal set for next year already, or you guys don't, haven't thought that far ahead yet? Oh no, the day we got back from the competition, we started planning the next one. Oh. Yeah, there were, yeah, time, time is of the essence. Um, and so, we're going to make it lighter, we're going to make it more efficient, we're going to uh, slim down the batteries. It's, it's going to be a little tough uh, to ensure that we can compensate for that amount of power. 
Um, but I think a redesign of levitation engines could be smaller. Uh, that's not, we, these are fantastic and they are able to run with cargo. They run for a fully scalable system, but that's not necessary right now for consideration of the competition. Uh, we can redesign the hover engines, we can redesign the system mechanism and the clamping and the stability uh, to ensure that uh, we don't have, um, we're able to monitor the thermal coefficients of the, uh, the Delrin rollers that we have, make sure they're not getting too hot if we go up to high speeds, um, and to redefine the structure of our uh, system. I don't know if we'll go with the scissor mechanism, the clamping, uh, if we decrease levitation force, but there's still an opportunity to have a system that clamps to both sides of the I mean, because we, we know we need to grip it uniformly on all sides. Uh, and we look to a lot of the other teams for that. The, uh, we actually had some people from uh, War University uh, uh, in Munich come down. They were giving us ideas of how they could, we could refine our system. And so, uh, and they they built two pods. They are fully the weapons and rocketry research facility. They are a, an incredibly talented group of individuals, and they built two pods: one a levitation, and the other for speed. And so they were showing us the levitation systems. They were showing us, oh, we actually used aluminum rollers instead. They made the aluminum much softer than the uh, the aluminum of the I-beam, so it wouldn't great. The wheels would fall apart rather than the uh, um, the I-beam itself. So, hardest part is getting an I-beam. Every team is struggling with getting an I-beam. And we found out that the first iteration of the competition, uh, they were given I-beams as a, as, a, as a goodie bag. Everyone who ran got an I-beam as a goodie bag. And right now that I-beam is in, is in a tight commodity and the only supplier we've been able to find is the one who supplies for SpaceX. So, it's a cruel irony there, but we'll take what we can get. A lot of people in the world don't even know that this exists. Um, and they, they just keep trying to do the same old thing, you know, make, make like another sort of train or something like that. Um, and uh, this is like really the first opportunity to create something that's a fundamentally new mode of transport. Um, and this is what, what you're working on is the only thing I'm aware of that can actually be a radical improvement over the, 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 the current state of the art. Um, and it kind of blows my mind how good you guys are at uh, creating these, uh, these pods. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, seeing the, uh, the results. All right, congratulations.